for me, Nintendo New York was always a cool celebration for Nintendo for a while. I love how many cool details there are, and how much merch there is, and of course, Stripper Mario is always great. But when they announced Nintendo World in Japan and then Cali? Oh, I knew I had to visit both. With the proper attire, of course. Why both? Well, not only am I a greedy YouTuber, but also I thought it'd be neat to be able to compare the two and see which countries got what better. I'm gonna compare a couple categories and let you know how both Nintendo worlds fare in each. Let's start with the layout. I'll paint y'all a beautiful picture. And some videos. First, we got Nintendo World California. The music! They had the perfect decision of making the entrance of the park a green pipe. You end up inside of Peach's Castle, see some cute details here and there to butter you up, and then you walk out the front doors, and it's like you're 12 again. It is straight up magical. The ambience they have going on is 10 out of 10. Like, I'm getting goosebumps everywhere, and it's been like 5 seconds. The layout of the park was a single floor amalgamation of a bunch of Mario references. Mainly 3D Land and New Super Mario Bros. And absolutely zero Odyssey or Galaxy. You have Peach's Castle in the entrance, four minigames mostly at the left and the right side, Bowser Jr.'s Castle on the far left side, Bowser Jr.'s Castle, I didn't even know he had a castle, a merch shop at the right side, Toadstool Cafe at the opposite end, and then Bowser's Castle also near the end. The main floor is bustling with people with a bunch of question mark blocks and little secrets here and there. Mario and Luigi also make their way through this point as well. We have to move. These are celebrities. In Japan, you also start with the pipe entrance in the Peach's Castle, where I would have been mesmerized if I hadn't seen the same thing a few days ago. Oh, but they have lights. This one's a little bit better. I don't think there were lights in California. Nah, but while a lot of the details are the same, in Japan we have two floors instead of one. The floor you start on has a couple mini games, Bowser and Junior's Castle, and a Mario Kart themed shop, while the bottom floor has Kinopio's Cafe, a merch shop, and the entrance to a unique Yoshi-themed ride. Now you got a general idea of where stuff is, let's get to the details of them. First things first, Nintendo California and Japan feature a system where you can purchase a band that connects to the Universal Studios app. The bands are adorable. They feature a number of characters including, surprisingly, Daisy? Really surprised she was here, but no sign of DK or Rosalina whatsoever. Besides looking swag, they also log your scores for the Mario Kart Bowser Challenge, as well as the minigames around the park. They tally the overall scores of the characters represented, so you can actually have the characters compete against each other. They tie it together where you have to beat 3 out of the 4 minigames in the park to be able to access Bowser Jr's castle. So let's take a look at the minigames first, which unsurprisingly are identical in California and Japan. The first minigame I played was a Koopa themed one, where you hit the pow block to make the shell go up the pipe. Looks very simple. I think this person just lost, actually, if you could hear from that. A little embarrassing. I got it? Alright, cool. Thank you. Easy. Easy! Next, we had this weird Goomba one, where I guess you'd bait the Goomba out or something by cranking this lever. Remember, kids gotta be able to do this, so it's not gonna be the hardest challenge. Alright, I am extremely strong. This is, uh, I'm not gonna be worried at all. The gloves are on. Very simple, two down. Next up, right over there, the big piranha plant. This one, incredibly badass looking. And what's really cool about this ride, you see right there, you see those clocks? Those actually symbolize how much time you have to wait to get into the front of this. It took forever, by far the longest minigame ride we've had to wait for. I still have no idea what to do. The gimmick was to hit all of the clocks and turn them off before the big plant wakes up. Oh my gosh, I was so nerve-wracking. I had no idea what I was doing. This one, it was all right. It's fun, but it's just like... Too nervous. Yeah, too nerve-wracking. And the wait is so long, the punishment goes crazy. Finally, we have the Thwomp minigame, which in my opinion, was most fun. All right, we're here, last minigame of the day. I don't know what the hell is going on. The Thwomp is threatening their lives. I think they just lost. Easily the most fun. I, I think it was like the quick reaction time and like very responsive, easy to understand, great. Since I was able to ace at least three out of four, I gotta access Bowser Jr's castle now. I'm gonna cover it in just a sec, but let me tell you a few things that Japan had unique to them. While the minigames were all the same, they had this one 3D world attraction that was incredibly sick. I waited in line for like 20 minutes and only one kid was able to get it the whole time. It doesn't give you any passes, but you get coins from it that you could use to unlock achievements in the app.
They also had some really cool note blocks, other small details here and there, and Pikmin. I don't know why the hell they were there, but I'm gonna count it as an easter egg. The biggest difference from Japan and Cali in terms of ride though, was that Japan had a Yoshi themed ride that gave you a beautiful view of the whole park. It wasn't anything too crazy, just a nice ride full of little Mario and Yoshi references here and there. Not sure if the wait time was exactly worth it, but hey, it was neat. Wait, I forgot they had Toad Hat. Definitely worth it, never mind. Now on to Bowser Jr's castle. The detail they had in this place was phenomenal. A lot of cool references of Bowser Jr's toys and examples of trauma. When you make it to the end, you encounter this super sick augmented reality minigame where you fight for coins, swipe away bombs, and fulfill the level. It makes you into a short king if you get hit too, which is a cool detail. You might look silly on camera, but the game itself is solid. The final ride in both locations is Bowser's Mario Kart Challenge. You start by entering Bowser's Castle, which again, has the coolest design and references all over, like with the Koopa Kids and the weapons he got lying around. The wait is usually pretty long since it's the most popular attraction, but at least part of it is outside so you get a beautiful view of the park. Also, side note, apparently the inside is super cool as well, but uh, I was only on the outside because I was on the single rider line. So if you have friends, you're in for a treat. I can't relate. The actual attraction is an AR ride, and though we couldn't get much of the footage of the actual thing since it happens through a visor, take my word for it that it's incredibly sick. You go on this immersive race with the Mario squad against Bowser and the Koopalings. Your role is to kind of just chuck green shells at them, and you get points the more of them you hit. While that sums up most of the attractions, we of course have the mascots which are more different in each country than you'd think. The main similarity is Peach. There's a line, I take a picture with her every two hours or so in her little courtyard. She has a voice thing that gives random replies, it's very cute. Mario and Luigi though were different. Apparently you can take pics with them, but when I was there, they just made their way like celebrities. Like, you can't actually take a pic with them, which was a little tragic. In Japan though, oh, they're chilling in the main circle on the first floor. You can get as many photos with them as you want. Unfortunately, I did not get a photo with them, but I did get one with my boy Toad, or rather Kinopio, since he's only in Japan. In terms of attractions, the winner is definitely Japan. It's like asking would I rather have an ice cream sundae or an ice cream sundae with a cherry on top. You get a little more pizzazz from the second one. Now we move on to the food, where both Japan and USA get some big wins here. In Japan, you got some places outside of the main park that's Nintendo oriented. For instance, you got this Pokemon stand here that sells shakes inside a Bulbasaur and a Pikachu pancake. It ranges from other little stands like Mario Kart popcorn to establishments like this one. There's only like five things on the menu, but the line is constantly packed for these Mario and Luigi themed pancakes and sodas. They both actually taste phenomenal. And not only that, but you can see them being made by the workers here who were really sweet. They, they like my Daisy outfit. Nice. <laughs> the US didn't really have any cool food places outside of the park like Japan did. However, what both countries did have is a Toadstool Cafe. In the US, it's really hard to get a spot for this place. You gotta make reservations first thing in the morning when you get there, and then maybe you'll be able to eat by three. We had it all day, no reservations, but we clutched it out, being able to go inside the Toadstool Cafe. Oh, I can't wait. Which, oh, thank God we did, dude. That was so scary. The Toadstool Cafe entrance is adorable, first of all. It's got a chef toe doing his own thing, while also a bunch of cute power-ups here and there in display. When it came time for ordering, which, might I say, we got a great reservation number four, I made sure to order a decent amount so I can tell you guys what's the move. Since if you order by looks alone, you'll get the whole menu. The design of the food is incredibly charming. They put so much love into it. Like, look at this goddamn piranha plant caprice. They really didn't need to do that, but here we are. As for taste, they definitely did a solid job here. I'm not a salad guy, but the star salad tasted great and the short ribs were to die for. It was easily my favorite dish. Mario and Luigi burgers were solid too. I like the Mario burger more, but the Luigi burger has pesto in its fries, which tasted great. I wasn't the biggest fan of the desserts, like the question mark block was tiramisu, and I really don't like the taste of coffee, so this wasn't very good to me. The bean pole cake was adorable, but also just okay, you know, less sweet than I expected and more creamy in texture. Also, fun fact, this was the first and only galaxy reference we saw in the park, where we heard Gusty Gardens play. I mean, I guess this streetlight was in the shade of Rosalina's dress, but no, I'm not gonna count that. In Japan, Kinopio's cafe was easier to get in. No reservation needed, we just kinda walked in and waited in line. The layout was similar and of course still very charming. They even had this cute-ass toad in a penguin suit. 
The menu being different means more opportunity for cute ass food. And while that was true, we were most impressed by the wait time, which was like a quarter of the time compared to the US. It took like 10 minutes for all this food to arrive here. Design wise, I was most impressed by the dry bones fish. They did not have to be this f***ing cool, but they were. Also, tasted the best in my opinion. This was really good. Here we have chicken and rice shaped in a star, which may or may not power you up. Finally, you had some Bowser themed food, which the US lacked. Um, wasn't that great though. And while the food was cute as hell, I think overall, the better Toadstool Cafe was from the US. The wait time was much longer, but the food overall did taste better. I liked the dessert in Japan more though, and they definitely got the win and stuff outside of the Nintendo Land itself. So far, it's been relatively neck and neck with the categories listed, but the one where one country blows the other out of the water is with merch. Let's start with the weaker one. You'd think America would be on their A-game when it comes to selling stuff, and eh, you know, their merch shop leaves a lot to be desired. The designs of the shirt are mostly just characters thrown in, some of which work better than others. They also have some random goods here and there, like keychains, this Mario Kart thing that holds popcorn, I think, gloves. And some other stuff that honestly just wasn't too appealing. It's just Mario related, so you go, ooh, neat, and kind of move on, but very few stuff that looks swag and, you know, you actually want to keep, in my opinion. Japan, though, I go a little crazy. I don't even know where to begin. The plushies alone are immaculate in Japan. So many more cute little guys than you can collect individually or put on your head. They had fire shirts from the Mario universe and from other IPs? Side note, remember this place is called Super Nintendo World, not Mario World. There's no major presence of anything outside of Mario in either of these two parks, so this Pokemon stuff is definitely cool to see. They had underwear, snacks you could buy, mugs, uh, there's just so much diversity. And you know what the best part is? Everything you just saw right there wasn't even the Nintendo World itself. It's the stuff you find outside the park. The 1UP store inside the park was incredibly crowded, Five times as large as the one in Cali, and ten times the people, oh my goodness. I could go on and on, but here, let me show you highlights of the whole thing really quick. This is one of the best designed enemies in gaming history. Bullet Bill, bro? Come on, let's be real. <gasps> I love him. I love him. He's so cute. Peach merchandise. I need, I need to express how rare it is to see anything Daisy related, anything Peach related. Absolutely nothing. This is crazy. Oh my gosh, I love him. Look at the fuse is kind of blown already. This looks so cool though. Dude, the chef one is so crazy. We're whoa! We have the entire rest of the store here. Daisy is in the fucking corner by herself. She's just chilling, fully stocked, which is the worst part. Koopa underwear though. That's hype. Get all the baddies. I bought zero things at the Cali store, but came back plenty from the Japan store. It's not even close, fellas. Your wallet will suffer if you go to Japan and are a nerd. They even got a bonus gift shop based off Mario Kart, which is mostly similar to what we've seen, but has a few more Mario Kart influence merch specifically. Yeah, unsurprisingly, end up here after the Mario Kart Bowser challenge, but you can also enter whenever you'd like. It's just a really cool design merch shop. I see why they put it up. Nintendo does like money. And so, yup, it's not even close. Japan clears this one. All right, fellas, we pretty much got all the content down for each, but how feasible is it exactly to enjoy either place? In Cali, prices to enter the park can range from 109 to 150 bucks. In Japan, it can range from 8,600 yen to 10,400 yen, which is basically between 60 and 72 bucks. In Cali, buying the tickets means you have access to Nintendo World the whole ass day. You can come and go as you please. While you have to reserve really early to eat at Toadstool Cafe, everything else is feasible to visit throughout the day. In Japan, you are not guaranteed access to the park for long. Once you enter the park, you will have to reserve a time on the Universal Japan app. Out of the 17 hours we spent in Universal Japan over two days, three were spent in Nintendo World. It is pretty hard to get good timings. While Japan was cooler in many aspects, I was less stressed while I was in Cali and got to enjoy the park a lot more. If you're only going for Nintendo World, I definitely say go to the one you're closest to. But if you live in like Hawaii and are equally close to both, I'd say if you have time and are punctual, go to Japan. And if you're not an ultimate diehard Nintendo person and just want to see super cool Mario stuff reliably, go to USA. In my opinion, even though Japan had more stuff, it was the lack of accessibility that kind of made it rough for me. With more time, Japan's is better. 
but I overall enjoyed the California one more. Regardless, I recommend them wholeheartedly. It really was a magical experience visiting these parks, and I definitely, definitely recommend you do it too. I also recommend you subscribe. These trips cost me a lot of money and it helps a lot. Okay, bye guys. Thank you for watching. See ya.